Yeah, I think we have done this much part. Okay, so we say diffam uh, can be solved using a half circuit method, and the condition we said that the system should be symmetric across some vertical line, and uh, then left side and right side can be independently handled. Okay, and we are shown last time some theorem which is given in uh, Razavi's book, and. Uh, using the same method and across this there is a symmetry. Please remember here one of the thing I assume that it is a differential system. What did I say? V in 1, V in 2 are such that one rises by delta, the other decreases by delta, but this is not a really a condition. Okay. We will prove that this is not necessary, but initially we assume that that should be necessary part. Now, I will show you that is not really necessary, but first let us see if it is assumed that Typically, this opam can be converted into half parts, and uh, you solve output voltage at this by a simple amplifier minus Gm1 Rd parallel R1. Similarly, you do for the other side, which is Vy by minus delta V in 1, which is Vy upon this minus Gm2 Rd1 Rd2, and if I subtract or add whatever it is. I will get gm1 rd1 parallel r1. Now, this idea that a v dash 0, uh, which is essentially when I say r ro equal to ro2 is equal to rd1 equal to rd2, gm1 is equal to can be reduced to 2 gm rd and rds are smaller normally than r0, then it is same 2 gm ro, nothing very great appears. Okay. We can do it analysis which is much more rigorous which we have been doing all the time. So, there is a second method which I am not showing you read from the Razavi's book which is actually a circuit technique. What essentially they will do for example, they will assume that one of the input is grounded V in 2 and then see the performance uh, influence of V in 1 on V o 1 and V o 2. Okay. Then they will figure it out what is the V in 1 is 0 and then and then they superpose the results to get the net gains. Okay. So, that is a very standard technique of superpositions. So, read that other technique which is more popular circuit technique. This was shown to you because diffam shows symmetry and therefore, it is much easier to solve this, this method. It is not that this is the method or something, but if you see something simpler you probably go through it. Please remember in that case, if you are using this, this will be driving this. So, some kind of a source follower outputs are given to the common gate or common source system vice versa and then you have to do some real analysis to get the normal analysis done, which probably you can read. In case some of you did not find that ok or not understood, come to me individually, I will solve for it. Okay. That is nothing very big, but this method I liked it very much because for a defam case at least this is very good and simple. Uh, yeah, in the region of V o V n circuit is linear, devices are in saturation, okay. you are right. However, there is an issue if you are looking a uh, difference gain as V o 1 minus V n 2 upon V n 1 minus V n 2, which is called A v difference mode, then it, this will become G m R d parallel R 0, that 2 will go away, that is only thing. However, the point which we actually took care in all our definitions so far, we said the V in 1, V in 2 are such that they are differential. What does that mean? We said if one changes by plus delta V in, the other must go down by delta, but that is not very necessary as I show you later. Okay. This is a good condition to start with and uh, we still say it can be still doable even if they are not fully different. We can see that a del V in 1 can be broken into V in 1 by 2 plus V in 1 by 2. Then we can add half V in 2 by 2 and subtract half V in by 2 in series, power supply 4 in series such that V in 2 cancels otherwise and V in 1 adds. So, this is still V in 1, is that ok? V in 1 2, V in 1 2, they are in series, so V in 1. This is opposite. V in 2 are opposite in polarities equal, so they cancel. 
So, this can be written as 4 supply in series V n by 2 plus V n by 2 minus V n by 2 plus V n by 2 keep doing this any number if you have this. Now, this is 4 similarly I can say if this is so that I can, I can write then I V n 1 plus V n 2 by 2 and V n 1 minus V n 2 by 2. So, the statement that this can be represented by 2 such uh, series power supplies or supplies or signal supplies. Now, you can see from here what is this value could look be looking for V in 1 plus V in 2 by 2. It is defined as common mode voltage okay, which essentially can occur because if V in 1 is equal to V in 2. So, V in 1 plus V in 2 by 2 is V in 1. So, it is essentially saying it is a common mode voltage whereas, subtraction is difference. So, any signal therefore, can be represented as common mode signal plus difference mode signal because at the end why I said diffams what is the important characteristic of a diffam that it rejects all common mode signals as much as possible. So, now we are representing this into series combination of common mode signal and this. Similarly, I can do it for V in 2 on the other side okay. and I am not saying it should be this. So, I repeat this is that ok. Okay, so, equivalently saying I have a uh, two sources in something like this and uh, only thing is you can see here V in 2 minus V in 1 here V in 1 minus V in 2 because that is what the values you had and correspondingly you wrote this. And then we define as I say a common mode voltage V C m is V in 1 by V in 2 and difference mode signal is V in 1 minus V in 2 is that ok. So, this representation of the so now I am not saying that it goes delta this my I am not saying I say whichever it is I will de break into equivalently this which will always give me some common mode signal and some difference mode signal. Now, the idea behind all this game was that what is the gain with for this and what is the gain for V C this since there are two sources now. Okay. So, we say what is the method we will use we will figure out the gain for difference and we are get, get the uh, gain for common mode and check it whether one is much higher than the other or vice versa whatever happens we will see what is and if it so happens that the of course, there is another term which you should know that is called uh, common mode gain converted to differential mode. So, it is called A V C m dash d m ok which we will calculate okay. is that ok this is only a definition everyone knows for last so many years I have not figured out any nothing I, I have not got anything great new things in this I repeat I just broken the signals into common mode and difference mode signals. You can see this is plus V i d by 2 this is minus V i d by 2 V c m is same that makes my job much easier because if V c m is same on both cases then the circuit will become even simpler. So, I have now two signals one is plus V i d by 2 minus V i d power for the difference mode and for the common mode I have another equivalent circuit which says where it is common to both V C V and C M individually putting is as much saying common to both ok. So, I have two circuit to solve and if I can solve these two circuits then we know just now we did V x is minus G M 1 R D parallel R O 1 into V i d by 2 at this point output just now we calculated. The other side is V y G M 2 this is since it is minus V i d by 2. I put this plus. So, it becomes G m 2 R d parallel R o 2 V i d by 2. So, I calculate difference sig uh, again which is V x minus V y divided by V i d. Okay. So, which is nothing but G m 1 G m and let us say G m 1 is G m 2 equal to G m and R o 1 equal to R o 2 is R 0. What does that mean? So, two transistors are identical we will get rid of this also and say if they are not what will happen ok. So, if they are identical 
the gain becomes just G m R d which we just now calculated that nothing great happens. However, if you look at for this second circuit and do similar analysis V x minus V i this, this gives me since V x is equal to V y then both input will give same voltages okay, outputs. So, the difference being 0 the gain is 0. So, if I now take a ratio of A V D m to A V C m it is infinite that means at no time common mode signal will actually get amplified okay is that okay this is what essentially is the main feature of differential amplifier the assumption in all this was i repeatedly say that why this cancellation we said is important because in real life one believes these two transistor will not be too far they may be two input signal lines or sometimes one ground and one other line in which case the noise may not over put separately for different places. So, assumption is if noise sits on this something same noise will put something on this and if that happens the common mode noise will actually get rejected. Okay. So, that is the feature this defense provide. So, wherever you are looking for uh, rejection of noise you better try with a differential amplifier system in which you can reject common modes. Of course, in real life we know V C m is not 0, okay. it is some finite quantity. So, the ratio of A V D m to A V C m is not infinite, but large enough in finite numbers and that value we will call it as common mode rejection ratio, slightly different, different way we will explain that, but that is what we are looking for. Is that okay? So, what is the defined property? it will only amplify differential signals, but not amplify or no actually will not amplify anything or output will go to zeros difference if they are common modes. Please remember individually you will still can get outputs single stage kinds, but difference of them is 0. Please remember V x is same as V y, it does not mean V x is 0 and V y is 0. Is that okay? So, this issue has to be clear that transistor is amplifying, it is not leaving its job, still amplifying, but both side being identical outputs reach identical and therefore, the difference of the two is 0. Okay. That is the reason why we say it is rejected. So, if you only pick up output here say oh there is a noise reading, yeah noise is riding on it okay. and amplified noise is riding on it. Okay. But the other side is also riding the same way. So, if I take difference the common part will cancel and that is how we say noise gets cancelled. So, please remember that if I make sometime wrong statement which you are very smart to catch immediately, uh, what I again say that I am never saying that V x is 0 or V y is 0, I am saying V x and V y are equal. Okay. That is the statement I make even if there is some issue please come back. Is that okay? These issues are actually all of you have done this earlier. I am just trying to see how do we use them in DFAM design. Today, of course, we will not be able to design. We are going to design a DFAM at the end, and there are certain other parameters of interest other than CMR. One, of course, is the difference gain, how much you have. The other is we will like to know what is the common mode gain you get in reality, and we also will like to have more specification for a given DFAM. Two of the specification maybe I will tell you today. One is called output swing. At the end of the day, how much output is available to you from minimum to maximum is very crucial for the next stage. Okay. Therefore, I will like to know what is the output swing. And the most important among them is what is the possibility of device remain in saturation for any kind of VID that is minus or plus. So, the what is the minimum and maximum input which is possible for keeping devices in saturation this is called input common mode range ICMR. So, these two the another two more parameters which we will look into later not today possibly is the power dissipation because for any design that may finally limit all your performance. If I say this is 1 milliwatt that means we and VDD is so much the maximum current given to you is so much IDD into VDD is the power. Okay. So, once I say 1 milliwatt 
3 volt, 2 volt, you divide and that is the maximum current drawable from the power supply. Okay. So, now you have to assign how much here, how much here, how much here, the net current flowing from the power supply cannot exceed the given value for the given power DC. And the last, but not the least, uh, after all in a MOS transistors based any circuit, there are hardly, I mean though I am using RDs, but they are generally not there. Uh, we will like to have outputs driven driving next stages and what will be the next stage input uh, impedances capacitive. So, they will be actually driving a capacitance. Okay. So, when you give input change, how much the output takes time to change is called the slew rate, how fast that is C dv by d 0, how much current is available at the output for capacitor to charge or discharge is very crucial, because that decides the speed of this circuit or some way related to next stage how will it will respond. So, another term which will actually like, these are terms, why I am using same term, because this is what op amp specs are. By the way, the circuit which we have just shown, which we will show now is the first stage of op amp. First stage of OPAM is a difference dif uh, DFAM, so I am trying to use, but the final specs also are same for either OPAM or DFAM. So, I repeat, I am looking for power dissipation, I am looking for slew rate, I am looking for output swings, I am looking for ICMRs, and I am also looking for difference gain, and I am also looking for CMR. There is another term which will come at particularly in the case of this, which is PSRR. We will see if power supply has some changes, what it influences to the end at the output. So, we will also have another parameter, at least not in DFM, I will say I will put it finally to OPAM, which is identical stage. So, I will solve all of them for OPAM. So, PSRR. So, that also is another important issue which you will have to address to. So, these are the specifications. So, normally what they will give you. Okay, another thing which I did not say the bandwidth, okay. which so far I am not putting capacitances, so I am as if thinking there is no, and then finally it will come from the bandwidth, and bandwidth is something to do with not only the RC time constants you get, but also on the FT value which the device is able to give you. And I repeatedly saying you that typically tenth is what you should be able to use safely if your device has to operate in proper mode of operations. Okay. Now, that is something we will talk about in the frequency response part, okay, that what is the bandwidth relations. We have already solved one small problem, if you say bandwidth and these are some way related, because it is first uh, pole or dominant pole is essentially related to bandwidth. So, if many cases we solve assuming this is the dominant pole. But in fact, we will show you later, those who have done my earlier device course, I have used that method, zero time constant method, instead of using normal Bode's technique, we will show you that we can figure out at least quickly, if not very quickly, quickly, what is the, which is the dominant pole. Okay. And if you get the dominant pole, that is your bandwidth. Okay. If you want to plot full Bode plot, that is all poles on zeros for stability purpose, you will have to go through all transfer functions, get all poles and zeros and plot it and find phase, which is another terminology which we will use later, how much is the phase margin. Okay. Okay, so, there are other parameters will come in OPAM. So, we will wait for that, till then we will only look for DFAM characteristics, which is the first stage of an OPAM. Okay. So, is that okay? So, these are some issues we must address now, so that at the time of uh, OPAM design, I in my mind what I am designing at. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me look into common mode again. If you say V x is V y, okay, I join them, and I there is a common mode signal which is V in C m. Sorry, this this is here. This is V in C m. Both are both sides same. So that's shown like this. R d's are this. So, if you see it, it is essentially equivalently saying and let us say this current source is not really ideal current source, okay, which is will never be actually. In reality, there is nothing called ideal current source. So, there will be some resistance associated with and that resistance 
is RSS. Uh, okay, so what I am saying is, so if I say equivalent circuit for AC, of course this DC is shown, but that is actually going to ground. I have RD by 2 parallel combination and this is RS with signal of V in C n equivalently. This is a very simple amplifier, which is this amplifier? This is a common source amplifier with source degeneration. Okay. Though I have solved it, I inadvertently did not realize that I should not solve. So, I kept solving and then I realized that I have already solved this problem. So, I need not resolve again, but just for the heck of it, the equivalent circuit is as shown here. This is the IRSS, this is IRD, IRD is minus IRSS because sign is taken down. Okay. In fact, I should have taken sign up. So, that would have been same, but does not matter, the voltages would have changed in the sign. Okay. Then this would have been plus and that would have been minus. So, it is saying the same. Okay. IRD, which is uh, V0 by RD by 2, okay. then Vs, which is the source voltage here, is IRS times RSS, but IRS is IRD. So, this is uh, this. IRSS is minus IRD, which is Gm V1 plus current in this. You can see the current here plus current here must be equal to current here, which is I R S, which is minus I R D. So, this method which we have earlier applied, I am just rewriting. You need not even rewrite. This is exactly what we did earlier. I am just, as I say in advertently, I forgot that I have done. I keep solving things. Then I realize why I am doing it. I already done once. Okay. Yes. Is not it. Normally, what we will do in the most cases uh, in the fans or something, we will source and bulk we are connecting most cases specifically, but if not given yes GMB must be, you, you can even now add GMB is not circuit, we are already solved with GMB. So, it is not that we cannot, but for the first take we always say the IC circuit will be allowing us. Uh, of course, in a long channel devices we always did that, but in a short channel uh, we cannot neglect GMB, which at the end after when I say if I scale down what I should I will get hurt and how will I get out of it. So, that may be after all that I say okay, from here to here what is the my problem, which is your problem. My time it was very straightforward. I worked well, nothing went wrong, but now everything goes wrong. So, how to get out of it. Okay. Okay, so, this analysis please I mean those who wish to write figure it out, but I do not think there is nothing great I have done. Just see the last expression. All this is given by me earlier. So, finally, V 0 by V in sim, which we call A V C m is minus G m R o parallel R d by 2 R o into R d by 2 upon R d plus 2 R. This is expression as we derived. Okay. And if we say R s s is much larger than G m 1 upon G m, which will be RSS is a current source output resistance, so it is very, very large. So, this may reduce to uh, firstly you may say minus GM RD upon 2 1 plus GM RSS, or if you say this is also true, then it is minus RD by 2 RSS. This is same thing what we derived for source degeneration, load resistance divided by source resistance, that is exactly what we get. However, why we actually derive this? Because now we say that this A V C m is not 0. Is that point clear? We are now saying at this the A, at one end at least the voltages are is G R D by R S S because R S S is not infinite. Okay. This is the most important part which I want to explain. R S S is finite and therefore, one must say that the V 0 by V in C m will be finite and it will be minus R d by this is R d by 2. So, this 2 is only coming because of that. So, R d by 2 by R s s. This is essentially we still assume that G m 1 is G m 2, R o 1 is R o 2 or something like this, but in case they are not there, which is what what is why it can need not be there, what is the cause? You are anyway doing technology course, you are doing other design course. What will be the cause in which two transistors may not be identical, what could cause it, anyone. The reason why this mismatch occurs a variety of reasons, the dopings on different transistors in the 
what we call channel implants are not correct, there is a spacer problem, there are many issues, boron depletion is another issue and there is issue of different W bias actually during lithographies. Okay. So, these are called mismatches, age effects and mismatches, they will be there do what you, how small they will be is what is important, we will prefer them to be almost identical, but never identical okay, as close as possible. If that happens that the device, two device normally M1, M2 being so close, this difference will be very, very small. But ideally, this is only a statement in real life, uh, the issues are different. There is, may not be only one defam, there will be n defams, each will have different variations. So, in real life, variations may cause on chip variation, chip to chip variation and wafer to wafer variation. So, there are huge problems at the end of the day, it is called variability issues and one has to take care in design now, variability issues. Okay. Yeah, like threshold may vary plus minus 10 percent, then what do we do? Okay. Our assumption is which is constant, so everything is fine, W by L is constant, all that issues are, temperature is constant, all these issues are not true in real life. So, at least we should look at least some of those variations and see what will it influence okay. and that is why designers should know a priori. Okay. Is that okay? The issues are related to technology and they must be brought in in your thinking because at the end device will be fabricated on silicon okay, or circuit will be fabricated on silicon does not listen what you want to tell. Okay. She, it does what it wants and then you are left with thinking why it did the other way. Okay, I wanted this, he is not doing. So, what should I do now? That probably he will do what I wanted. That is some game you can play. Okay, so, here is a case which is of relevance in real life. Let us say M1, M2 do not have identical characteristics, which is very true in fact. Okay. So, that then the Vx is not equal to Vy. Okay, that is but for sure because then if they are different, they will not have the same values, even if signal is common mode. If GMs are not same, how can you have same drops across the RDs? Okay. And therefore, firstly, even RDs are not same. I mean, there is a delta RD goes with that. Some plus, some minus. So there are issues and issues. Mismatches are very, very, very difficult to handle. Then, of course, the uh, symmetry things should not be really used because they are not really symmetric. Essentially, we can, but I, I don't think we should use that. Uh, then we just calculate the currents as simple. I have one input common mode and let us say this voltage node is V p. Now, if we say so, I d s 1 is g m 1 v in c m c v p and I d s 2 is g m 2 v in c m minus v p, then v p from this solution can get g m 1 plus g m 2 by R s s 1 plus g m 1 plus g m 2 into R s s and then V x is something like this, where this one, ah, yeah, 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 sorry, if that is so, that is true, I am sorry, huh? I made, I think lower down, I correct, I am is okay, fine, thank you. So, if I find V x and V y, it is minus G m 1 V in C m minus V p into R d, and then I solved, this is minus G m 1 R d 1 plus G m 1 G m 2 R s s into V in C m. Similarly, I can calculate V y, drop, nothing else, okay, drop across R d. Okay. So, I can calculate V x, and I can calculate V y. What is the gain we are now looking for? That is what is called conversion of common mode into difference mode, because we are going to get a signal difference gain, which is V x minus V i with reference to what? V in C m. Okay. So, gain which is of more relevance is not just the way I showed you earlier, it is essentially this V x minus V y divided by V in C m. That is the gain, which is uh, many times is called a v c m dash, have you written down then I can show you the next slide, okay. fine. So, if I as I said I am interested in the difference gain for common mode signal which is v x minus v y 
divided by uh, and then I subtract g m 1 minus g m 2 delta this this into b and c m and that I then I define the gain uh, is a v c m dash d m is that clear the new definition is a v c m dash d m which is v x minus v y by p c m. So, if I divide this here I get g m then I define g m 1 minus g m 2 is delta g m normally how much ideally how much it will be delta g m will be 0 if we say g m 1s are equal to g m 2s or what it is and we also define a term g m which is g m 1 plus g m 2 sometimes they define half of it I have defined as it is. So, in some book if you say divide by 2 so 2 g m will turn up here in replacing this term ok. So, that 2 sometimes if you see do not think why I may bhul gani many define as a kya because I realize I figured it out in the book they are used to I think but I was solving and I defined something. So, I kept it. So, please remember this is my definition generally it is half they will put it ok average there they say, but since I have not used it my value may not show those tools somewhere and then we define the term a v d m divided by a v c m dash d m is essentially what we call as common mode rejection ratio and uh, if you now divide that. Uh, it can be figured out it is 2 g m because g m r d will cancel from there. So, 2 g m upon 2 delta g m into 1 plus g m r s s. So, since we said we are one of the main feature of a DFAM is what? What did I say? It should be able to reject common mode. So, if I want larger c m r r s typically what is c m r r in d b s for a opams which you use in the lab typically like 741 how much is good 741 has at best 80 dBs ok 80 dBs uh, normally we would prefer a good opam is how much 120 dB. So, if you are to design a 120 dB opam you will figure it out it will create hell of a problem for other parameters particularly the phase margins ok. So, there is an issue how much CMRR I should be allowed so, that I should get the other performance also as good as I want. So, that is the design issue is that clear CMRR is therefore, kept flexible term they say minimum CMRR should be 80 dB ok. So, you are not saying 120 dB because otherwise you cannot design it ok. So, issues are always clear same way we will we'll never say power supply power dissipation should be so much it is very difficult it should not be more than so much ok. Or the sleeve rate should be at least this much, gain should be greater than so much ok. These are the bars or the upper and lower bars we must decide because then only design is possible at any time you put rigid specs nothing is designable ok. So, one cannot design a chip with a very very rigid uh, specification you must say more than less than whatever the bounds you can give please give it because then the designer has something to play on ok. Thoda isko badao thoda isko niche karo abhi dono hi gaya to fir kahi nahi aayenge na it will that has to be understood. So, if I want larger CMRR from this expression uh, as good the two transistors better is CMRR ok delta g m jitna kam hoga utna CMRR jada hoga jitna jada g m hoga that is transistor have larger g m means what is larger g m means either it is driven by larger currents or they have large size transistors. Please take it this large size word should be taken with a pinch of salt why because large size means large generally lengths are very rarely changed. So, it is the widths which are changed if widths are changed what will change capacitance because capacitance are normally related proportional to w all parasitics. So, essentially you change the w by l you will be actually talking about increase in capacity and change the w to higher value yeah ideas will increase everything will go nice b g m will be higher, but then the bandwidth will be affected is that clear and therefore, one must not say increase w by l, but one catch I may say I may might have said also any time you are worried about device to be in saturation put larger w by l's for given currents ok. It will always enter saturation think of it what they say 
if I make particular current which is square law term, then see to it your W bias are much larger comparatively, then it will always remain in saturation. The other possibility of improving RSS uh, CMRR is to make this RSS very large, which is what we will try because current source as good a current source I will give for bias that will be better. And uh, if you can do this, obviously your CMRR will be larger. So, now you can see there are parameters which you are governing CMRR. So, if you change something somewhere to get other spec, this also will get affected and therefore, do not see CMRR not a spec, it is a spec which is to great extent variable greater than that. Oh, I cannot tolerate less than 80 dB fair, fair enough, okay. but do not say it has to be 80, it can be 85, 90 or whatever it is. Okay. What Typically 80 dB, all op amps, general purpose op amps are 80 dB, special op amps like LM323 or 321 or uh, 8576, which is another device, they are CMRRs at 120 dB. Okay. Uh, they are low noise amplifiers and they specifically try to improve CMRRs, uh, but their bandwidths are not very high. Okay. So, there is an issue, that is what I keep saying, there are gains, different applications require different op amps or different amplifications and they have different specs. So, you have to choose if you are doing board design then you have to choose from the data sheets which one you should fit. In chip we do not have a data sheet, we have to design it. Okay. So, we actually solve it and figure out what is the and another thing I keep saying when I design something and I convert to layout which is what one of the major output of any course of design. Then the first thing we will do is we will that layout which I have drawn for the poly for every region, then I will extract the circuit back from the layout and then I will re-simulate that circuit and you will be surprised that whatever initially specs with which you have drawn the layout, they do not match. Okay. So, you have to redraw or re-simulate, change something, redraw it, re-extract till they are close by assuming things are okay, because this layout is for a given technology rules which come like you are working on 90 nano UMC 90 nanometer technology. So, they have their layout extraction tool will actually follow them. So, you are very close to foundry is that clear, but even then there is no 100 percent guarantee that silicon will show you same performance, okay. but it will still be close to what you were looking for is that clear. So, at the end of the day this is some turnarounds will be required as many turnarounds is cheaper or costlier, larger the turnarounds cost increases, because one fab you go through you have spent already lakhs of rupees. Typical cost for a 90 nanometer process for a 2 mm by 2 mm chip or per mm square you can say is around 8 lakhs these days for academic you know, uh, this discounted price okay. on a 12 inch wafers the cost is 2 mm, 1 mm per mm square is 8 lakhs on 90 and 65 nanometers for 2.25, 0 0.35 it is 2.5 lakhs. So, most of the designs which we do in the lab is only for the sake of money because otherwise the money is too high. Okay. Okay. Uh, defam with now let us see defam designs or at least defam analysis once again and uh, there are three defam shown here you can draw each of them. Instead of showing V in by 2 and minus V in by 2, I am showing you 1 together as V in that is the only difference from what I said earlier. Okay, the most important part which I did not say it, these are all CMOS DFAM. Okay, apne course ka naam CMOS hai na, isle ab, we will not use any N channels now, uh, P channels other than N together. Hi hmm. So, these are all CMOS DFAMs, which probably are the ones which we will design. Whenever gate is connected to the drain, then it is called diode connected. Okay. The P channel, the source is at the power supply side because you need negative supply VGS. So, S has to be at higher voltage, so positive higher voltage. So, that VGS is minus. And gate is connected to drain, so device acts like a actual diode. What is the difference between this diode? This is also a diode and a normal diode. Do you know what is the difference? The diode has IV characteristic which is exponential. Is that correct? 
So, in all technologies in uh, CMOS, there is no real diode made, actually diode is this, okay. size change karo, sometimes thicker oxide dalo, uske characteristics change kar sakte, but diode is this, this is how diodes are made. Is it okay? Last, but not the least. So, the first one is a diode connected load, which I just now said. This is standard n channel 2 devices, which is forming a diffam pair, which is biased through a ISS source, okay. And this is my input. The second one is these are current sources, you can bias it properly through some standard biasing system, which we will show later. And this can remain as a constant current source, okay. It is called current source loads. Please remember these are p channel devices and uh, we are all the time feeling as if only n channel devices can be diffam pair. You can have inverse, you can have a p channel diffam pair and you have n channel loads as well. Okay. The third and the foremost of all these, uh, these are very specific ones and not uh, often used in most of the op amps. Okay. The advantage of these two are essentially I did not draw it okay, here also, these are double ended outputs, okay. these are double ended outputs. Whereas, the third one which is the most common if I am used in operational amplifier at the first stage is a single ended output stage which is shown here. The feature is very interesting here because here the two p channel gates are connected to one of the drain of this side at time if driver is you can do other side also then the output will be the other end there is nothing they are symmetric so it does not matter but normally shown this everywhere so i am also you can as well do here and then take output from there it's only question of mirror okay. the only thing which i didn't say very specific here this iss there in most cases will come from either applying a bias such that this device always remain in current source mode or actually it will be mirrored the current will come from a current mirror. So, if the gate of this is connected to current mirror gate, then same current which you are passing in that will pass in the this transistor and this will act like a current bias circuits. Okay. So, it is either putting a bias which sometimes good if you have a good reference bias voltage available like band gap reference or then you do it normally with current mirrors. Okay. This is what the single ended diffam essentially is most popular diffam which is as I say most popular simply because all first input stages of op amps are these. Okay. But there as I said other day there is a fully differential diffam okay, or fully differential op amps then you do not need both outputs okay, fully differential and at that time this cannot be used either of them will be used in that. So, to inputs to outputs okay, is that called? fully differential. So, in those cases only you will require first two otherwise most uh, general op amps first stage is simple one single ended diffam. Now, before we solve the case for the third one which is most important quickly we will repeat for the diode we already solved this. So, diode connected load the load resistance is essentially the g m parallel 1 upon g m parallel r o p g m is normally very large compared to 1 upon r o and therefore, it is normally 1 by g m p and therefore, the gain is g m n by g m p which is now you see the difference it is nu n by mu p into w l by n by w l by p. Okay. So, for a diode connected uh, this the load uh, for diode connected loads the gain of a diffam is uh, already is if mu n by mu p ratio is 2. So, you have already got little extra gain out of using p channels. Okay. Then what is the advantage if they are same they could have been same then this will have cancel then the increase the ratio I will have to increase more size of n channel compared to p side to power. here already mu n by mu p ratio is giving additional boost. So, still n channel device will be larger than p channel. Is that okay? The current source load, the load is only ROP. 
then A V is G M R N R O N parallel R O P. The two R O's of the N channel and P channel at the output are parallel. So, they are parallel. If they are equal, they will not be equal because of the mobilities, but many times they may be equal also because you may adjust sizes. Okay. Therefore, you may have G M N R O N parallel R O P. So, these are standard uh, difference gains for two of this, but what we are interested in at the end of the day is the third one which is what we are going to design. Therefore, we should look into it little more carefully. Is that okay? These are trivials, standard this you can always, we have already done earlier these two, we are just repeating the results there again. Only difference in earlier case and this is that here this n channel p channel device. So, mu n by mu p will also a beta. So, mu n is one time mu n c ox, the other is mu p c ox. So, mu n by mu p ratio will appear and that you must take care. Typically, how much is the ratio of mu n by mu p in the actual semiconductors? Silicon? I am not saying what kind, what is the typical value of mu n by mu p in a normal semiconductor bulk? 3, okay. it is almost 3, 482, 1400 something. However, in MOS transistors, this can never be attained because the surface mobility is not as high as the bulk mobilities. So, the best of ratios you may get 2.2, 2.3 and therefore, most of our designs are for 2, because you may not get 2.3. Okay. So, we may say okay, 2. So, generally if you are not given any value, assume mu n by mu p as 2. I may specify beta n dash and beta p dash, so there is nothing you have to worry. But in case I do not specify, you can always use this as 2 because that is the most likely value. The best of mu n you may get is 600 centimeter square per volt second and best of that you may get is 300 centimeter square per volt second for holes in most MOS technologies. In higher technology even it is worse. Okay. So, it is becoming very, very difficult now to maintain even 2, okay. but that is the game we play enough so that the interface states are very much in control, so that the mobility is roughly true. In, these are called surface mobilities, these are not bulk mobilities. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, very good. Normal diode ka IV characteristics aisa hota hai forward mein. Wo jo diode hai IDS, VDS, wo square law hai. But if you adjust your sizes and VTs, they look closer to that. So, they, though they are not square laws, but they look similar and therefore, it is called diode as such they are not diode. Okay. Is that clear? Essentially, this is the difference. This is a square law term. Okay. Is that okay? But this is good enough in most characteristic requirement. Uh, the major reason is in either case the current here also is very small and here also is small. So, diode blocking is still possible in the other case. Therefore, one says it is like a diode. Okay. Okay. Let us look for the third one which is the one which is of uh, great interest to us which is the first stage of OPAM which is called current mirror defam, current sink or current it can be called. What is the difference between source and sink? Whenever current starts from power supply it is called sourced. Whenever the current goes to the ground, it is called sink. Okay. So, definition wise, I just thought I should tell you it is actually sink source. Current is sinking into the ground. Okay. Okay. So, in some books, if you say sink, so I thought I must write that, that it, they may also call it sink source. Still source of a current, but it is called sink. Okay. It is going to the ground. Okay. Okay. So, it is normally derived out of a transistor M5. And normally, this VGG either has to be controlled or a mirror can be brought, mirror current can be brought to pass in this. this. Now, we will like to first try to find out before we do uh, gains of this, quickly look into it. There are some voltages of interest. This is VGS3. Please look at it. As a first, you draw figure and then do not write this, write when I see. First, draw the figure, that is most important. Have you drawn the figure first, then I will start talking and then you can write. I repeatedly saying that capital and small and everything should, should not be 
unless stated otherwise by me, please do not worry too much about it. There is a voltage V g s 3 for m 3, there is a voltage gate to source voltage V g s 4 for m 4, both are p channel device, their gate is connected to the drain of m 1 or drain of m 3, both are drains. So, that is our output 1, V out 1, which we are not very keen to know. Okay. What we are interested in? The output at this end, which is called the actual output of the amplifier. V g 1 and V g 2 are the input signals. Then this is V G S 1, this is V G S 2 or to say V G 1 minus V G 2 is the difference signal V i d, V G 1 is therefore V i d by 2, V G 2 is minus V i d by as we did earlier equivalently same. Then V G S 1 is essentially this voltage minus V p, V G minus V p, V G minus V p. Now, here is a catch this is a DC current flowing in this ISS okay. and normally it is a good current source whose output resistance R O phi is very very large that is what the good current source is about. So, I am postulate now if it is an excellent current source the change in V p is 0 is that clear V p does not move okay. or A c wise it is 0 delta V p is 0 means A c so, essentially V g s 1 is V g 1 and V g s 2 is V g 2. Okay. This is my statement. I may prove now that V p has not moved anyway. Okay. So, that I did for earlier lemma, I am doing now for real circuit. The consumption now I am saying, please remember this is the statement I am making and based on this statement, I am going to make a, this statement to you that I can assume V p to be grounded as far as A c is concerned, is that clear? If this is not large, some current will flow, okay. that is the problem. Okay. So, we say right now R O 5 is extremely large, okay. even if not very large is still doable, but at least we assume so. Okay. Is that okay? Is that statement clear? Here is an equivalent circuit of the system. Please see it very. I, I have done it very intentionally a different way of drawing the circuit. This may help you to appreciate what I am saying. Okay. So, look at the input side, one is V i d by 2, other is minus V i d by 2 and this is that common point where we say the output is, I mean this is grounded physically signal, okay. which is that point I am saying, I am actually saying from the ground this to the ground. Okay. Iska sign dekho thoda sa change kiya hai mene, kyunki ye minus V i d by 2 hai, is liye usko plus V i d 2 mein upar plus minus kar diya mene. Okay. If you see the M 1 M 2 transistors, then it is G M V i d by 2 into parallel R O 1 is the equivalent circuit for this. Please remember this is your V p. The other side is, please see the sign now because of this V i d sign, G m 2 V i d is shown down going from source to this. This is A c signal, please take it, this is A c signal across which there is a R o 2, is that okay? So, m 1 m 2 have an equivalent circuit, this is common point V p, this is G m 1 V i d, this is G m V i 2. Same way if we go ahead for 3 and 4. Uh, 1 upon G m 3 R O 3. Now, whichever di if it is diode this will dominate, if not this will dominate G m 4 R O 4. Okay. Now, there is something which I am right now not showing here another source, I will bring it little later, okay. but right now as, a, as if C I C that is the equivalent I C. Now, I will show you why, why I have not drawn then and now I will show. Now, the idea is something like this, if you see R O 5 uh, resistor this side is ground this is V p. Now, we say the current in V o 1 by R o 1 or V o 2 by R o 2 are very small. Why we are they are very small? Because R o's are very high. So, we believe that those currents are extremely small. If that is so, this current and this current thus pass through 
R O 5 to the ground. Is that okay? This current and this current passes through R O 5. Is that okay? Now, the direction if you see it is G m V i d by 2 goes like this, G m 2 V i d by 2 comes out of it. If you now say G m 1s are very close to G m 2 and that the R O 5 is, x, what is the current through R O 5? G m 1 V i d by 2 minus G m 2 V i d by 2 and that is very close to 0, is that ok? In which case we may say the potential here is equal to potential here. So, if the V c is ground, V p is equally grounded, is that clear? So, that delta V p does not move by lemma is what I have used, but I now showed you through the circuit point of view that V p remains constant. So, no A c current uh, that voltage for A c uh, is same as V c. Okay. So, this idea that in circuit how people use that sometimes you know because they may not show you this, they may suddenly put a ground there. Okay. So, you must know from where this theory has come that V p can be treated for A c as ground. Is that point clear? Because in a book if you see they may not show all this, they may only show this and show ground, then you must not feel why this is grounded. This is how it is looks to be grounded. Okay. This is what you say you know, between the lines, what they do not write and what I can tell you from where they derive this. Okay. Is that okay, Surbhi? Is ka arrow ki dhar hai? Idhar? Is ka arrow ki dhar hai? Idhar? Ye current sources hai na? So, is ka path to yahi hai? Ek idhar se ja raha hai, ek idhar se aa raha hai. इसमें से जाने वाला करंट सब्ट्रैक्शन है उसका प्लस माइनस है और यदि वो सेम है रफली व्हिच इज व्हाट आई एम अशूमिंग जीएम1 आर वेरी क्लोज टू जीएम2 देन वी से दिस देयर इज नो करंट इन दिस एक फ्लोटिंग इसमें एक नीचे का पॉइंट इज द ग्राउंड पे तो ऊपर भी ग्राउंड ही होता है या जो पोटेंशियल नीचे है वही ऊपर होता है एक रेजिस्टर लो यहां जो पोटेंशियल है इसमें करंट नहीं है तो ड्रॉप नहीं है ना तो ये पोटेंशियल ये पोटेंशियल सेम होना चाहिए दैट क्लियर दैट्स व्हाई यू से वीपी इज एज मच एज ग्राउंड as much as is a very important one, it is not really ground, but as much as it is ground. Which okay. The reason why I did it was because I figured out in the books they just draw circuits without telling you any great thing. So I just thought so this is your input, okay. This is your G M1 V I D one, this is G M2 V I D, okay, R O one parallel acha okay please just a minute you can see if this is grounded this is grounded i can connect them is that correct this is grounded this is grounded so i connect them okay so if i connect them now now there is some catch word is going on again this equivalent circuit is not accurate abhi niche wala aane wala jyada accurate hai wo main aapko abhi dikhaunga abhi then i what i did i use this as a one common line ground okay then ek circuit idhar liya aur uske aage dusra circuit usi ground pe laga diya this is what normally the figure in the class uh, books will be this kind this has come from this okay so this is a technique which i showed you given aisa kuch ho to aap finally kaise laate hain books hamesha ye dete hain okay now we see from here if it is gm1 vid okay ro1 parallel this of course it may you may keep gn3 or not it is up to you because the values will decide but in real life uh, we can keep them whichever is not there will go away okay. now this fact is most important have you drawn this circuit then i'll explain that's the issue which i am now telling so the output of the first stage m1 m3 can be figured out by a current source of gm vi d shunted by r o 1 shunted by r o 3 parallel gm 3 is that ok ok have you drawn all of you ok so look at it this is the first stage m 1 m 3 stage i repeat now you should i put this figure ok so i have figured out i first solved this m 1 m 3 and got v out 1 but now look at this v out 1 where is it get connected 
to the gate here. This voltage is same as this voltage. For AC, this is ground. Okay. So, this voltage is same as this voltage. They are connected all through. Is that correct? And now, there is an issue started. And that is what you were saying. Now, you can see the output at this second stage, which is M2, M4 stage. One input is coming from this Vid by 2 minus Vid by 2. But the uh, there is another input coming from here. Maha VGS hai. M4 may be ek input aya hai. Dikra ko? VGS 4. Jo AC hai because ya AC hai output. Jo maha connect ho ke aya hai. So when I see output, now I see I have two inputs. One at M4 and the other at M1. M2. So, I must now actually superpose the two, I must get the voltage due to the VGS4 and also should get output due to VGS, uh, I mean VG2 or VG, VID by 2. So, I need both sources to be now used in evaluating the V out, that is the interesting part. Is that clear? Joki both obvious nahi hai, Islam in a nahi dikhaya. Is that clear to you why this the term which I am now showing? There are two sources for this output. One is if I give input here, if I give input here. Okay. So, there are two transistors are receiving inputs now. Okay. So, what is the method I use? Initially do not treat this, treat with this, next time treat this or output due to VGS 4 and output due to VG 2 or VID by 2. I will add them, superpose them to get my V out. This is the technique which all of us directly or indirectly use. Okay. So, I have shown you how from where this method has been chosen. Is that clear? If I do not connect this, this issue will never appear. Is that clear to you? But as I connected to make it single ended, the first time I realized that the output of the first stage is input to one of the transistors of the second stage. Is that clear? And that must be now taken care in solving. Okay. Is that okay? So, if I do that, which is what is relevant for in my opinion, now you can see what Raj was saying I am hiding. Since V O 1 is V G S 4, is that okay? V O 1 is V G S 4. So, apart from the first M2 ke current ja output hai, wo to GM2 VID by 2 source se aara hai. What is the resistance it is going to see? RO2 parallel upar ka RO4 R1 upon M4. But the same resistance is also getting additional voltage because the output will still remain same, resistance will remain same because resistor, uh, M2 M4 are still same. But there is an additional current source sitting here, which is because of M4, which is GM4 into VGS4. Is that clear? There is an additional current source, which is GM4 VGS4, and there is one normally GM2 VGS2 uh, is already there. So, now you have two currents. The only interesting part there is AC wise, both are a upper lane ke koshish kar raha ek. And that is why their signals are current sources are shown opposite. Is that clear? This is the crux of diffam outputs. Is that clear? If I do not show this, then I am making a great error. Okay. This is the reason why you see a gains as shown in the books, because but as I say, most books do not show this kind of equivalence. So, I thought maybe this is a high time that I show you that from where they are getting those expressions. Is that point clear to you? There is a transistor M4 which is also receiving AC input and M2 you are actually putting an AC input. Okay. Both contributes to the output of the second stage. Okay. They must be superposed. The problem was that one is pushing the because of VGS is a P channel device, the other is N channel device. So, the direction is opposite. So, they are as 
but one of them is minus sign so probably they may still add physically in numbers is that okay okay, okay last quickly we'll finish up or maybe we'll stop here we'll show you next time the gains so is that equivalent circuit please now remember this is the real equivalent circuit of a single stage defam is that okay this is the equivalent circuit of single stage defam okay now calculation are very easy output is here substitute back here in that and calculate v out finally which is then v out by vgs vid by 2 will get us or vid will get us the difference scheme is that clear so next time